Hi Bethel, it's Amber. I'm here in Poland. I'm actually on the border of Poland and Ukraine. Um, I'm at the closest city um, westward of the Ukraine border, the closest city to be a safe distance away from, from Ukraine, but also uh, close enough to provide assistance. And so um, this has been a whirlwind, a whirlwind of a trip for me. I, uh, I made the decision pretty quickly to come and before I knew it, I was here. Uh, and so I'm honored to be here. Um, I'm very humbled. It's a very humbling experience. And I wanted to give you guys a little insight into what's happening here and give you uh, an update on the situation um, from the ground. And uh, I, I get through my work to work with other veteran foundations. And one of those is a foundation called Save Our Allies. And they began in August. They moved into Afghanistan to extract, extract the Afghan allies when America pulled out um, of Afghan in, in August. I think I said that already. I, you're gonna have to bear with me. I haven't gotten much sleep. Um, I think it's Saturday. I'm pretty sure it's Saturday. Um, and they saved 17,000 allies. So they've been in incredibly efficient at what they do. And it's, it's their, their passion, their uh, Christian based foundation. And so they moved that mission over here to Poland. And if you, if you're unfamiliar, um, the U S military cannot go into Ukraine because they're not a NATO country. And so uh, if they did, it would be a sign of aggression towards Russia. And so what the government does is, or, or private entities do is they reach out to private organizations such as Save Our Allies, and they are sent in to do extractions of important people or Americans in general. Um, and then to also deliver medical assistance and do other really important things. So like right now they're in the, uh, process of setting up a communications infrastructure because um, church groups come in to try to do volunteer work in Ukraine and uh, Russia will knock out the whole cell, cell infrastructure soon. And so what they're doing is setting up a backup one so that organizations and churches can come in, nonprofits, and still work. And so they're do, they do a lot of the back-end logistics um, and operations because of their, um, their military experience and training, they're able to um, facilitate a lot of these different things. And so the work they do is incredible. Um, and so I had the opportunity to come and work alongside them. I was actually sitting in the front row between Rachel and um, Abby last Sunday, and I had been, you know, considering coming and uh, as a woman and somebody who can deliver medical aid um, as a nurse, it was, it was very, very much an asset uh, because it's all women and children here. And so I was, th I was considering it or I was thinking about it. And then Rick uh, gave his, his uh, sermon about um, David at the end of his life and how he wanted one more drink from the well, um, the well of, of the Lord and, and the eternal drink. And so I was thinking to myself, you know, Lord, what a gift to be the, to be the thing that uh, such an accomplished man desired after such a long life um, and fulfilling life to be the one thing that he wanted one more time. And the Lord just spoke to my heart and said, the well was a vessel. The well, the well was simply a vessel. Just be my vessel. And so I knew I'd be buying a trip, buying a plane ticket uh, to Poland. So thank you, Pastor Rick, for that. Um, and so I, I've been very humbled to be here and grateful. Um, the level of need is, is dire the uh the amount of people is absolutely devastating uh imagine imagine millions of people moving into another country it's 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 almost difficult to process as i as i talk to polish the polish individuals here it's something that they can't even comprehend the scale the scale of what's happening and and they're expecting the second and third waves to come through as russia push pushes further westward into ukraine and so um, they they expect that the second wave could completely crash the infrastructure of Poland. And so they're trying to process them through as quickly as possible. So take, for example, the facility that I volunteer at, they try to get people to, they give them two hour slots to lay in beds and, um, and take a little rest and recharge their cell phones and get their children fed and deliver basic medical care um, and then move them on. But these people have, for the most part, absolutely nowhere to go. And so they're just jumping from facility to facility to try to figure it out. And uh, Poland's trying to figure out as best they can the nuances that make it difficult here um, as they're here for longer and longer periods of time. Children need schooling. Children need 
um, to get back into their education. People need jobs and it's just not sustainable here um, for that amount of people. And so um, the nuances also of the cultural differences, you know, Ukrainian people speak Ukrainian and Russian and Polish pe people speak Polish. And I'd like you to imagine an American trying to give Polish medicine to Ukrainian individuals. <laughs> it's, um, it is a character building ex experience, but we are doing our very best here. Um, and so the hearts and the grit of these people is some, something amazing to witness, you know? I mean, the, I, I've spoken to people who two days ago were in basements in Kyiv, you know, hiding from the bombings and in their basement with their children and their grandchildren and the men are fighting. And so it's a very male led society. And so suddenly they're alone and they're having to evacuate on foot because they're running out of fuel in the country and they've they've completely lost their their cell phone batteries have died and so they have no means of communication and they get to the border and they have no no way to process what even comes next and uh so it's they are so incredibly broken and um, I keep hearing them tell me over and over again through through the Google Translator um, I was not prepared for this you know I, I I just have lots of conversations the children the things that the children have seen and um, to see their resilience in the face of this is is truly a gift. Um, I actually had a woman who um, she you know she asked me, "You're American," translated it, and uh, I said yes. And she said, "Why are you here? Why would you leave freedom to come here?" And it, she was sincerely curious. You know, why why would I leave? That's what they view us as as just a place of freedom. And I said, "Well, because you matter too," and when she looked down and read that she had tears in her eyes and um and i realized that you know we are we are very much a beacon of hope for them and it gives them something to look to look to and um so if, if even in that moment uh, all i could do was offer a little bit of hope to somebody um it made it made it worth it because in 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 such dark times you know people are just seeking that they're seeking the helpers that's what they're looking for and so i'm i'm humbled to be here as a helper um and so um so many needs so many prayer needs um if you are if you wanted to make a donation you could visit saveourallies.org and that goes directly to the foundation that's doing the work here and um so much so much to pray about for for protection over these women and children they're they're so frightened of men right now they've had buses come in offering to take them because they have to transition out of here quickly offering to take them to germany or belarus or you know name the location and entire buses have disappeared entire buses of women and children have been sold into trafficking and so there's bad characters every time there's a disaster there's bad characters as well and so pray for protection for these women and children around that and um, and, and for a softness, you know, in their, in their hearts as they, as they hold on to hope and they push past into a place of resilience that they never expected to be. Um, this is a first world country. These are women who weeks ago were living, um, a very similar life to you and I, they were taking their children to the park and going to the grocery store. And, and this is not somewhere they expected to be. And like they kept saying over and over again, I was not prepared for this. Um, and they don't know what the future holds on a catastrophic scale. Um, this is going to impact many people in many countries and, and it, the impact will be felt across the globe um, as we move forward. And so uh, I hope that gave you a little bit of insight into what's happening here. Um, and I, my, my hands are so grateful to be here, um, but all of your prayers and support are felt as well. I feel, I feel them and uh, I'm grateful for them. Uh, Pastor Rick reached out to me right before I left and he wanted to let me know that um, he and the leadership team and the finance team had had wanted to cover the cost of some of the travel and some incidentals through um, Bethel Cares. And that was absolutely not something I was expecting. I was more than happy to um, cover this trip on my own. Um, I was, I considered that, you know, part of the service of being here. And so that was very unexpected and, and I'm grateful. And so um, many parts of you, many parts of you are here with me, your support and your prayers. And I'm very encouraged by that. Um, before I left, my sweet Hattie told me, she said, you know, mom, I'm so happy you're going because I feel like it's my job to share you because if something like this, something unfair like this were happening to me, I'd really hope there was a mom across the ocean who'd be willing to come and do the same thing. And I thought that was such wisdom. 
um, from a child, you know, to feel the sacrifice and to know that it's it's a sacrifice that she would want in return. And so I know we're not we're not all able to be in the position to um, physically be in in the circumstances of being able to help. And so I'm grateful to um, offer my hands uh, for all of you who I know. Every one of you I know wishes that that um, you could probably be here serving and and wishes there was something more you could do. And so I just want to encourage you and let you know that you very much are um, in every way, especially with your prayers. And so know that we all we all have those important roles to play, and no no role is um, no role is too small. And so um, I have I have six more days here, and uh, I I know the Lord's going to move in really powerful ways, and. Um, and I know that he will offer me safety and protection and he will offer me all the, all the very perfect Ukrainian words to say. The Lord uses Google Translator too. Um, if you see my mom and dad, go give them a hug. I know that, I know that it was probably hard, you know, to watch their daughter leave and fly, fly across the ocean that way. Um, but they're warriors too. And I know their prayers are with me every day. So um, I love all of you guys. And uh, I'm so grateful to be here and I'm so grateful for all of your love and support and I will see you guys on the other side. Bye.